So, at the end of my last video, we discussed that this was a project trying to create um, a simple Wi-Fi peer-to-peer -peer connection without any game yet, just establishing a connection and sending data across a link. At the end of the last video, we were as far as updating a list of available peers. Um, and the next step into that was working the connection into it. I actually have the connection working as well as some data transfer, so we're going to go over that. So right here, there's an item click listener set on the list view that when one of the available peers is selected, um, that position will be sent to the connect method over in the Wi-Fi broadcast receiver. When we head over to the connect method right here, the given position from the list view is used to find the config that we stored earlier. And then the position of that device is used to find the address of that peer. Uh, a connection is called using the connect method, passing it that config, the channel. Um, and on success, it'll just pop up a little toast saying that the connection was successful. Down here, we have an info listener to determine uh, some information from the connection. It's mostly just to determine if the user is the host or not um, by determining if the group owner address matches the current device's address. You can see, you can see here that it'll display host in the main activity um, or client if you are not the host. What's more important though is this function called a play which patches the, the address of the owner as well as a true value for if you're the host and a false value for if you're not the host. Um, this is going to be important for determining whether the user needs to run a host socket or a server socket, excuse me, in the case that they are the host, or a, a client thread in the case that they are the client. So that calls play in the main activity. So if we just check here. right here. Here's the play function. This is where a new intent is going to be started. So the intent is called data display. We put some extras into the intent just so that we can uh, maintain some of the information we've gathered in the new intent when it starts. We pass the address of the host, a boolean saying if this device is the host and a boolean to see if the connection was successful. Starting activity data display, data display will move you over into the data transfer display activity where on creating we'll initialize some variables. Alright so here it'll gather that extra we sent to determine whether the connection was successful or not. Um, here we gather the host address and we convert that host address to an inet address so that it is usable in creating a socket. And then finally we get that extra that sent us the, uh, the boolean for whether we were the host or not. And we use that to determine whether we should start a server thread or a client thread. And I guess we should move on into those threads. They're both fairly similar to each other, except for some small differences. But I'll go through both nonetheless. So, this is actually called um, to initialize... Let's see, we'll go back. So, this is called first um, when the thread is created to initialize the address for the client and the port that the connection is going to be made on. Right after that in the data transfer display activity it'll call the start um, which will run the activity. First it confirms that the host address and port are established in this line right here and then as long as that's good to go 
I have it set up to loop infinitely um, to attempt to flood the sockets with packets, at least now in this initial stage. So this first try block um, will create the socket, and it only runs the first time when the socket is null, and subsequent loops it will not run this try block. Well, it will run the try block, but it won't run the if statement, is what I meant to say. Once that's all established and we have our socket open, uh, this block will attempt to send the client packet over. First, of course, the data will be converted into a string of bytes. Uh, here, I add an integer, which is just a count, to count the number of packets that are being sent. So this will iterate after it uh, wraps the data into a byte, byte array. And this counter will be displayed on the opposite device. Um, but you'll see in a little while that the server thread does a similar thing and sends its own send count to show how many packets are being sent on both sides. And it actually is extremely fast, but I guess that's the, uh, the idea behind sending UDP packets. Next, we have a datagram packet being created to uh, store that data we just converted into a byte array. And then it uses the data, the length of the data, so that that can be extracted later, and the, uh, the information of the destination, the port and the host address, to send that packet through in this next line right here. Next we have the receiving section of the client thread. This section is going to create a packet to, uh, an empty packet, to store the incoming data. The socket will receive the packet and extract its data, and then convert that data back into a string which will then be displayed on the screen. Uh, this receive count is an attempt to do the same thing as the send count was doing, but to show how many packets were actually being received instead of how many were sent to try to kind of get an idea of packet loss. But uh, I found that packets are being sent so fast that it's actually really difficult to see uh, the actual loss. Um, so I plan to include a count of errors instead to see the actual number of how many packets have been lost, but that has not been implemented yet. Um, and then there's just a couple functions down here that are used to um, get these strings from the threads back to back to the UI activity so that they can be displayed on the screen. Next we'll go into the server thread, which like I said is mostly the same except uh, a couple differences. So the server is the one that actually sets up the port, so just like the client, when it's run, it will uh, run infinitely just to flood the socket with packets, um, but just like the client only runs once to, uh, what was that, just like the client runs once to uh, determine the socket, or set the socket up that it's going to send on, the server runs once to open the socket. Um, I was getting tied up because I was thinking of something that's going to come a little later. But um, here you can also see that the timeout is set to one millisecond. I was playing around with timeout a little bit, um, and it seems that shorter timeouts are better um, as far as regarding packet loss because it'll just blow over a missed packet instantly and continue to <laughs> send packets out extremely fast instead of waiting for a packet that hasn't arrived yet. So once that's all set up, um, the server is going to receive first. Uh, the client sent first and the server receives first. The server has to receive first because the server does not know what the client's address is. The host address is known to both, but the server needs to wait for an incoming packet so that it can reply to that address that is contained within that packet. So here it's going to create an empty packet to store that data in, and it's going to wait and try to receive a packet. It's going to extract the data and store that into a string, and right here, if the client's address currently isn't known, 
it's going to gather that information from the packet. And this should only run on the first packet, or will only run on the first packet receives. Um, it will not run in subsequent loops after that. So then finally, once the client address is known, the server can now, or the host can now send its own packet. So it's just going to confirm again that the client address is known. Just in case in any of the first loops, the say the first client packet fails and it doesn't gain the address, we don't want this to try to uh, try to send anything before it has an address to send it to. So it'll confirm that the address is now known and then we'll convert the string data, player one string, which just says the word host as well as the send count like we discussed before just to keep a track of the number of packets being sent. Store it in a packet, packet gets sent, and it should be good to go. And then these functions here are used to display the strings on the UI activity again. And like I said, I'll post a picture of what it looks like, um, but the idea would be that the game would display if you were the client uh, or the host by setting player one to client or player one to host and then the other device will send that they are the host or client whichever the case may be and then the player two will be set um, based on that received packet information and it works and I'll like I said I'll post that up to show that it uh, actually is working but that is all for now goodbye